I'm Pete Austin. I'm the county administrator. Uh, Kevin Guesso is our, our CFO. Um, this is the third time we've done this presentation. It's a yeah. little slightly different today because we're talking a little bit more about the government infrastructure and environmental things. But um, it's mostly just a conversation. We want to introduce what, what we're working on uh, and hopefully get some good ideas from you guys. That's really what, what we are most excited about is you know, thinking about Canada County, we've been given this, this responsibility to kind of figure out ways to, to best use these dollars. Um, and we're really looking for ideas from the community about you know, what we can work. Um, we've got several slides here. We've got the presentation in front of you, so we're going to just kind of use this as a little bit of a, of a guide. Uh, we are taping this one, our video, or uh, making a video record of it, so if you have a cell phone you want to turn it off, and we'll try and, I'm hopeful that there'll be a lot of good questions and we can really enunciate those questions and maybe we'll try and repeat those a little bit so we get those on, on the record. Um, but anyways, as I said, we're excited to talk to you guys. Um, and I'm going to kind of be a little bit more heavy on the front end and then I get the technical and turn it over to Kevin and put a little bit more on the back end. Next slide. This is a, kind of some important distinction. Um, you know, we, we, we get ARPA and CLS FRF kind of interwoven, and I've made the mistake in using them interchangeably. Um, but it really, it, there is a, an important distinction. And if we go to the next slide. Uh, here, the, the, in the spring of, of 20 was the CARES Act. We aren't talking about CARES anymore. The spring of 20 was 2.2 trillion dollars for the, for the CARES Act. Then early in, in uh, 2021 came ARPA, and that was 1.9 trillion. And in that second round of money, then that ARPA round of money, was the community local government uh, fiscal recovery funds. And, and that's, that's this 3.5, 350 billion dollars that, that we're talking about today because the dollars that McHenry County was allocated comes out of that, out of that pot, if you will. Um, but we like this slide because it shows all the other all the other opportunities that exist in the American Rescue Plan Act. And, and when we're when we're looking at these dollars and we're looking at the applications and ideas that hopefully we're going to receive from, from groups like you, we don't we are we're working with a, a third party group um, that is kind of screening our applications. And we're really challenging them to think about these other buckets too. The $59 million that the county has a responsibility of allocating, we want to make that last as long as we can and touch as many people in as many different ways as we can. And one of the ways we can make that happen is if we can get access to some of these other buckets of, of dollars uh, for our community members. So we're hopeful that in some instances, you know, we, will, uh, we won't be saying no to an application, we'll be saying no but here's three other opportunities where we really think you've got a home run, and then we can, we can direct you there. So that's kind of what we're thinking. Um, now your next slide is, there we go. This is kind of a cool slide. It talks about what is eligible. And some of it is really simple to explain, right? The broad edge, you know, I know what that is. Um, uh, with support from the health, that's you know, pretty straight part, pretty narrow. But others are, a lot more vague and gray area, like addressing negative economic impact. That could mean a lot of different things. And so that's one of the kind of the areas of, where, of opportunity we think there might be uh, to get a little bit more creative and thinking a little bit more out, outside of uh, the straight and narrow, uh, like the broadband or, or public health workers, et cetera. And we certainly have some, some good support for public health that lined up in this bucket, but. The, the opportunity to address negative impacts of those, I do think, opens us up to a little bit more um, creativity, if you will. This, the other really important notes on this page are those deadlines you see at the bottom, those two bullets. And this creates um, kind of what we've felt is this competing pressures. We wanna, we wanna get these dollars that Congress has given us the responsibility of, of distributing, we wanna get them into the community as fast as we can. But we also have three years to make those decisions and, and, and for the county board 
to make its most informed decisions about you know what's the best allocation. Not the quickest, but what's the best way to use these dollars. So that's where that push and pull comes in. You know, we want to want to get the dollars out there, but we also want to be thoughtful and, and you know make the best decision. So kind of push and pull that then the, the reality is we have five years, five years to actually expend the dollars. So it's, it's a pretty long time frame. Um, that have been said, I think we were, I'm hopeful that we're gonna get some, some strong applications within the next several weeks and we're gonna begin reviewing those in December and potentially, potentially we could maybe have some first allocations as soon as January. But we're, we're working, you know, this is uncharted territory and we're, we're gonna, you know, I think err on the side of, of being thoughtful um, instead of, you know, just rushing to get the dollars out there. All right, next slide. Sorry, just I'm walking. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, the American Rescue Plan. These are, this is what we're talking about with the local dollars. Um, as I said, McHenry County, in that first batch of CARES money in 2020, was not what was known as a direct allocation in government. Um, you had to be a government over 500,000 in population to get the direct allocation under CARES. When ARPA money came out this year, that threshold of population that had lowered to 200,000 for county. So McHenry County directly got dollars from the federal government. That's the 59.78 million. Um, in the CARES Act, just by comparison, McHenry County, the, the dollars went through the state and then they came to the county and we got 2.7. So it's, it makes a difference if you get it directly from the federal government if it comes through Springfield. This came, the 59.7 came right from, from the federal government. But other dollars on, the, on that page already have come to McHenry County municipalities, uh, or Fort McHenry County school districts, and, and the state itself uh, got 8.1 billion. So just a little reference of how much money is available and, and, and is, is out there. Um, this note here, uh, local governments such as townships and special districts, they didn't get any money. So we're, maybe we'll get an application or two from a sanitary district or, or a township. I don't know. I'd love to have that out. All right, next slide is, uh, I like this slide. Um, I like it because, it, you know, we, we created it, Kevin and I are consultants, in, and I think it kind of touches on how we've been challenged by the county board to think. Um, you see words on that mission statement, like invest and inclusive and long-term benefits and transformative, um, those are kind of how we're trying to think about these dollars. You don't see words like band-aid or plug a hole or you know those kinds of things, those, those short-term thinking. We, we're, the board really wants us to think about, you know, coming up with some, some projects that have an effect that lasts beyond a fiscal year, right? That they really are investments in the community that, that are thinking about transforming, you know, some aspect of how we're operating here in McHenry County. As I think this mission statement sums it up pretty well. Okay, next. Um, Kevin is going to kind of start the slide in here and take it over a little bit, but when we, we, when these are talk about some of the eligible uses for the dollars. But we also talk about some of how we design our, our program. And we had literally unsolicited when, when, when the, the word got out in the country county was to be $59.7 million. We got 151, 115 million <laughs> ideas on how to spend that. I'm not being a little bit facetious, but it was about 115 million dollars of, of unsolicited requests from the community. So that helped us kind of gauge where the interest was, you know, what, and what. So we started to kind of arrange our program, our advanced mechanic kind of program, around those areas of interest that, that we saw. So, yeah. uh, so again, when we are talking about the American Rescue Plan for the county. Um, we are looking beyond, the, you know, we realize that there is additional expenses related to, for example, to EPE for your organization. But um, when we're talking about the projects that we're, or project ideas, we're looking at beyond that. So uh, some of it could be new programs and could be new ideas on how um, these funds can be allocated. So um, let's see, here we go. Um, what do we so, call this? The most important slide. This is the most, yes, this is the most important slide. We talk about the, some of the allocation, and, and when Pete was talking about the project ideas that we received that 
were unsolicited, um, helped us kind of design this framework and, 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 put it, and helped us uh, come up with different allocations. So we're talking about the environmental and infrastructure today, along with workforce development, um, economic development. So today it focuses on those two. Those last, two last week we talked about other governments and not-for-profits. Uh, those video uh, conversations were posted on our, on our county website, which we'll go over. So if you have ideas on that, um, or our interest in learning. Yeah, nearly identical. It's 95% it the same. We so so <laughs> we talked about these, uh, uh, also phase one and phase two, meaning our, our, our allocation, the county's allocation has been divided in the same way, meaning halfway of, or, or half of the funding is allocated, proposed for phase one, so 29.7 million, and then the other half for phase two. And that's how kind of, how we've kind of laid it out with the county board, is that we are proposing these, this phase gets 29.5, we're holding back on, on the second. The money isn't even here yet. We're gonna see how things go with the first phase and see what kind of interest there is and, how we're working on our budget. And uh, one of the questions that has come up a lot is, uh, you know, so for example, can somebody, uh, an organization partner with other organizations and collaborate in the different al uh, different allocations? And the answer is yes. We are looking for those kind of uh, ideas where there's synergy between the projects that we can, we can allocate that. Um, you see that there is an area here called contingencies we have put a little bit of funding or allocation there in case uh, you know one of the one of the things that we get is what if we get uh, very little interest in this area but a lot of interest in this area or the other areas then we can shift that funding around uh, if, if there's a need for that and again we'll see that depending on their applications and how they're coming through uh, through, the, through the application portal um, this uh, slide is a lot of information a lot of work to come straight from the U.S. Treasury guidance. Uh, so we're going to spend a lot of time here, but uh, it, it provides a broad eligibility. So uh, how we put that into the American Rescue Plan Act and following the U.S. Treasury guidance, this provides that information, along with, um, a, a, again, very broad uh, allocations here, no, nothing very specific. Um, then we talked about the different, and again, this slide comes straight from the U.S. Treasury website, but uh, one that is very important here is these seven categories. This is how we are uh, requesting, or how we're being requested to provide reports back to the U.S. Treasury. So when we're talking to the sub-grantees, in this case the organizations that are submitting the ideas and projects, um, we're requesting them to track information in the same way. So public health, whenever you're submitting a project idea, uh, you'll, be, you'll be asked to select one of these seven different categories. One item that I want to uh, clarify is that, uh, for example, public health, uh, premium pay, and revenue replacement, those are categories that are coming to report. These are not available to uh, organizations or sub-grantees. So for example, we could, uh, if there's a, a, a non-for-profit that you know, has had a lot of events being canceled due to COVID and they lost revenue because I mean, they could submit an idea for revenue replacement, but it would, the eligibility would be very low because it's not something that's available to a sub grantee. It's available only to, to the county. And so that's the same for public health for the county public health department. The There's only one uh, yep. public health. So that's why um, this is not something that's available to the sub grantees. You might be able to, you'll see it on the application because we're using one application portal for everyone, but we wanted to make sure that we clarify, you know, if you see that, it doesn't necessarily mean that your organization or the organization qualifies for something uh, under those. So today we're talking about infrastructure, uh, we're talking about negative economic impact, and then the services to the impact of the communities. Um, again, community engagement is where we are right now, we're engaging in the community, we're asking for ideas, we're opening the portal, uh, and, and again, more of a two-way conversation about you know, how this program is being proposed and how we're trying to deploy it in the community. Uh, this is the second most important slide, I like to say. Um, 
So when, when an idea is submitted, whether it is a partnership in a community uh, with multiple organizations, or it's one organization, this is the sort of uh, measure on how that project aligns with the U.S. Treasury guidelines, with the county board's the guidelines for the project, within that mission statement that, you, that Pete referred to. Um, so when, whenever a project idea is, a response is sent back to the, to, to the people who are applying or the organizations that are applying, uh, there will be an analysis submitted uh, to back to you as a response and how to measure against these eligibility requirements and what the points were uh, granted based on what the application uh, came to. Uh, with. So for example, uh, some, some infrastructure projects, you know, we, we're looking at how will that benefit the county, what performance measures are going to be. Uh, so we are going to be measuring it against this, this spread. It's a spreadsheet that we, we're right. going to be using and get, you will be getting back as a response. Well, we're, as I mentioned earlier, we're using a third party to do the initial screening. Um, a, a group that isn't from Canada County doesn't know any of the, the applicants, and, and we can get somebody to give us a good arm's length okay. read on this. It's not a final say, but, it, right. but it's, but it's going to help us sort through these a little bit. Um, but the group we're working with is a group by the name of the Bronner Group. They worked with Will County and, and Lake County, so on that, on that first round of, of CARES money. And those, those larger counties were they got direct allocation last year, so they kind of know what they're doing, and we're kind of using some of, the, some of their, some of their uh, you know, plans that worked well for them. And, and the screen, I think, is, is an important part of that. Right, and uh, you know, one, one other item that I wanted to point out is that in the, when the CARES Act was released and the funding came, um, a, a lot of the guidance was still pending. In fact, uh, sub-grantees were being funded without guidance being issued by the U.S. Treasury. It was a fire alarm. Right? Yeah. That came in. COVID came and became real in our lives in March of 20, and here's was like June of 20, and it was just right. crazy. This, the ARC money has been a little more delayed and a lot more thoughtful. Right, and that's, that's what's reflected and here. And that's what that's, yeah, that, that's how it's being reflected here. So a lot of these, and the scoring sheet, it's not, it's not something that we, we made up is not something that it's all following the U.S. Treasury guidance and how it will align with, with what their what the goal of the intention of the APA um, program is. Um, so reporting requirements: any any projects that are um, approved and go through this process will be required. As I mentioned, we will require uh, uh, intergovernmental agreement or an IGA. Uh, those not-for-profits or groups that are involved in federal government grants know that that's part of the you know, grantee grantor um, relationship. It's there is going to be a an IGA that will require the reporting to be met according to the US Treasury guidelines. So this is just one of those things that we want to put out there. Uh, once the funds are granted, there will be a follow up in reporting sort of being required. So um, one thing that come up comes up a lot is you know is this program kind of Reimburse or on a reimbursement basis or post, and so um, the initial application process will be on a reimbursement basis. So we understand that there might be some projects and some organizations that will require some upfront funding, and those will be sort of analyzed on a case by case basis. But in general, uh, the program is being deployed as reimbursable. So uh, the organization will have to incur the expenses first and then the county will reimburse those uh, once the program is approved. And as Kevin will show you later when we show the app, you can think in terms of a five-year right. program, I mean, if, if that's, if that's what, what makes sense for you guys. I'm not, uh, I, I just, I've said it before the other groups, I'm not a fan of, of paperwork for the federal <laughs> government, but I am glad that they're on the second batch of money that they're really going to hold people to a high level of scrutiny. Reporting is going to come to us and from us up to Washington. Correct. Um, this is the new slide on, this is sort of the new information when it comes to comparing this presentation versus last week. And and we want to clarify, you know, when it comes to water and sewer projects, you know, they have to meet the guidelines that we're highlighting here under um, the Drinking Water and Clean Water Act. So um, the presentation is going to be made available online on our website. So 
once you click on it, they'll, they'll take you to what those guidelines are. So if you're thinking about those kind of projects, uh, we would highly recommend that you look at uh, a DAP hyperlink and review that information and the requirements that come along with it. Um, same thing with broadband projects, that there are certain requirements there. Um, we are making some of this funding available for this, but we also understand that under the state, $8.1 billion that they have allocated, they have their own program. Uh, we also understand there's a capital projects fund, which is a $10 billion um, program at the federal level. Uh, we also understand there's a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that makes funding available for this. So we're, we're taking ideas for this, but we're also mindful that there's other funding available. I, and we might I am that up. absolutely confident that there will be investments made in broadband. I would hope we can accomplish much of that without the city Correct. Correct. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. And these, these numbers, I, I was talking with an, another consultant that the county's working with on our projected broadband investments next year, and those numbers are fluid, too. Uh, right. the, the state of Illinois has already come out with some, some different numbers uh, that they're going to that they're going to allow when funding theirs. Yeah, Pam? I do think we had talked about this, I know, at the board level, and there were several suggestions made about having that information about other available grants on our website, too so that you don't have to hunt and peck to find that information, that the county will provide all of that for you in addition to our application too, yes? Correct. Yeah, we, we will, and in, in, um, you know, the guide, the information that we've provided or direction that we've provided to Bronner is that the, the consultants that are helping us is that whenever a response is submitted back to the applicants, um, the resources specific to that application will be made available. Also on our website, uh, which I'll show in a little bit is there is a section for resources and all these links and everything else will be provided there. But that is a good point. Uh, you know, the board has made that very clear that we want to put that information out there. Um, and then the final point on this slide is um, that single audit requirement. So that means it's beyond just the normal audit process that an organization goes through. Uh, it's required to have a federal single audit, which Again, documentation is key. Um, there's a question about whether the county will have, uh, allow uh, indirect costs for a program like this. So uh, depreciation is a good example of an indirect cost. It will be allowed, except there will be a lot more requirements and, and reporting requirements related to that. So just something to keep in mind if you're thinking in, in, in that direction of the indirect costs. Um, so before we, we go into the website, um, we want to Kevin's going to actually go into the website and show you how to do the application. Right. So, uh, are there questions at this point that we can help with? I just had a couple um, looking at your application before. Um, is there a way that we can attach letters of support for actually the scope of work? Um, it didn't look like you were asking for a lot of information and those of us who applied for stuff before. We were like going, yeah. is there a way we can yeah. add you know, letters of support? We so heard you can talk to that when you do the website and you can show yeah. we, we did uh, get the same feedback from the prior meeting, and so we will add a section in there for documents. And so um, if you wanted to add documents, it's not available on the website, on the portal right now, but it will be available this week. At the end of this week, there will be a section there for attachments. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, in regards to infrastructure broadband, I know you said that you're hoping that some of the other funds would cover um, that bucket, but how, are you suggesting that like um, an entity would make a suggestion on where they want to build it out versus the county telling um, you know the third party where they should build it out? Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, well, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm open to ideas. Okay, that's fun fundamentally. If, if you've got an idea of an area that, that you think needs attention. We'd like to hear about it, and I'd like to see it in the form of an application or a note or something. The county does have uh, a two-phase plan uh, to expand. We've been working on that since August um, to expand uh, a publicly owned trunk line in the west and, and a publicly owned trunk line in the northeast. Um, we, we've done this six years ago here in the central part of the county, so we've kind of got some ideas here. But what's different this time is we're, we're really trying to connect public and private, and, and 
letting private entities compete for how they can serve that last end user off of our publicly owned trunk line. So anything that is possible, we're, I, again, I talked with our consultant on this today. Uh, they, they're feverishly trying to figure out what was in the bill that was signed today, but all the money's gonna go to the state of Illinois for the broadband dollars, and then the state of Illinois is gonna put its own set of criteria on how it's gonna be used. But if you've got some ideas, So you said that uh, on this evaluation criteria that you had some experience that uh, some other group or other group and you, you had access to some methodologies that they were looking at. Is that something we would be privileged to see? What I, what I said, sir, was that the Bronner group itself had experience in working with, with Lake and Wilkin to some extent right. Cook, you know, and, and the distribution of those, those CARES Act dollars in, in the first time. So they had, they had some experience. No, that more stringent set of criteria didn't really exist under CARES. Uh, right. this, is, this, is come, this has come in the, in the second round of those dollars when it's not quite as much of a whack a mole fire alarm that, you know, that we so were experiencing. You used, I believe, spreadsheet measure. I just didn't know if we might be able to see that spreadsheet somehow, what the measures would be. So, uh, it, on the resource page, uh, there's on, on our county website, there is a sort of a broader explanation of what that process is going to look like, so you can download a PDF there. Okay. I can show you. It doesn't necessarily say, you know, how a specific project will score, um, because, again, we're open to all kinds of different ideas, so we can't... And some of your narrative can help us understand how it will connect to that sort of criteria that you as Treasury has to look at. Correct. I see. Okay. And then you have another one on, on the next page about the ARPA funds. Uh, reporting status of the project. Is that, is that any kind of template we can see for that to see what would be the expectation there if we were to win funding? If Kevin's got that. Yeah, we would have templates that, for example, we'll go through the quick one for the budget um, just so you get an idea yeah. on the, yeah, yeah we're going to do that right now. Right. And right. so um, okay. you, you can get, and we'll have all these kind of <coughs> templates ready to go and you'll see how you can access them as you go through the application. Other questions for Kevin Schultz? I guess I, I would be curious if the Bronner Group or the county would have some sense of what, uh, if you receive some degree of funding, what restrictions were attached to the funding that you previously received and that kept you from doing some of the things that you'd like to do. So in this case, will there be some sense of that, that it might have been something that we want to do, but the funding, because of the restrictions on that funding, precluded you from being able to do that. So if, if you submitted a project, you could explain yeah. that in okay. the narrative, and that would, you know, I don't know kind of how that would score. So you're referring to like how the broader group, that's their experience in the first time? Something like this. I mean, there are definitely some real restrictions on the ESRA budget. So like, I, I guess I'm not really understanding your question about restrictions. We, well, they, they gave you definite guidelines of what you could spend that money on. Right. And so if there were things that you'd like to do but didn't have the wherewithal to be able to do them, I guess we could explain that in the application. Right. That, that would be the best way. Um, I know, you know, becoming, as an applicant, also becoming familiar with the U.S. Treasury reporting guidance will be key. Uh, which we also have available on the website. Yeah. Is, uh, be creative. You know, yeah. Kevin and I have peers working for other municipalities and other counties that are doing gymnastics to try and figure out how to keep as much money as they can for their local government. <laughs> <Right. laughs> that's you know that's a, that's a noble trade in and of itself. The McHenry County Board has been very very clear from us from the beginning that we want to see at least a majority of this whether that's 51% or 61% or 71, I don't know yet, but at least half going out into the community. So that's that, we're starting right there, that phase one, 29 million, we, we want to get it out and we want to we want to use a little bit of creativity on, on some of these areas. And, um, yeah, so in general, for example, one very clear restriction that is in the act is, you know, using any of these funding to uh, shift projects so that a tax levy can be decreased or saying that you've got a pension liability and you want to plug that liability, you can't use, you can't use it to change your life. Right. So things like that, that's all inclusive, uh, included in the, in the guidance, so I would recommend that you know, as an organization download the guide and, and, and take a look at that and how that fits. But 
you know, again, with what Pete mentioned, as being as creative as you can to provide those ideas, we're looking forward to those. Um, we do have some flexibility with public purpose funding, uh, but again, we want to make sure that we collect these ideas and we really can like, provide guidance on a specific project. Um, and I think it goes without saying, you know, in your school district, you have a whole bunch of the, uh, projects you're doing now. So we would like to see something new, something right. innovative, something creative, not just replacing something you're already doing. Okay. All right, Kip. So the first thing is uh, when you go to the county website, if you go under county government, um, you'll see a link that says that fans from McHenry County. And that's where we have uh, pretty much all the information related to, to, the Ameri to, to the American Rescue Plan. You could also hit it off that big front banner on the front page. Yep, that also works. <laughs> um, so you will see there is a lot of uh, uh, description. This comes straight from the US Treasury. Oh, we already posted the great that job of the team. <laughs> so this is last week, and you can watch this uh, uh, at your leisure. So this focuses on the non-for-profit and the other sort of lo other local governments that did not receive a direct allocation. So townships, uh, conservation district, special, um, district. special district, yeah. Uh, under resources, you'll see that this is where we have that information about, um, you'll see the uh, links to the other US Treasury reporting guidance. You'll see the application guide. Um, Thanks to uh, Jeff, who's in the audience, for pointing out you know, that we needed to have the PDF available so to be used as a worksheet. Um, we made that available as well. And so you can download it and go through it. Um, this is how it looks on, on paper. Uh, and then we also have a guide that will kind of follow, explain the different processes that we're, we're going to go through right now. Um, it'll also you'll have, um, this is the overview that I was referring to. So this has more detail, uh, back to your question, sir, um, about like what we're looking for and, and the specific guidance. So I would recommend downloading this as well and reviewing this, this information. Um, so uh, this is where you'll see that um, this information here will be updated as we go. Um, so as we're uh, making the allocations available as we're making the uh, payments to the, to the applicants, this information will be available here so you'll be able to drill down to who and what for and all that. So transparency has been one of those uh, key things that uh, we've been embarking on. So you'll see that, you'll see that available here. Again, you'll see it by program, uh, you'll see it by percentage summary, and you'll, you'll be able to drill down on that information. Um, so. That's the website. Uh, this is the application portal. And let me. So the first thing that you'll be asked to do is, um, if you have not registered before under Neighborly, um, you'll be asked to register. And so it's very straightforward. It requires an email, a name, and a uh, password. You, you, um, you see there it says housing and community development participant portal. That's because. We are using an application software that we've used for a while but for McHenry County Rental Assistance, those federal dollars that we receive for a community development housing grants, so HUD money. So there's, there's, there's other uses that the county has for this, so we just kind of piggybacked off of that. So if you have an account already, you won't need to make one. So just bear with me here. Right, so there is that code. So every time you're using a new browser, it's going to ask you for this. You will you will get this uh, security code in an email, hopefully within seconds. So if you get that code, that is definitely a good sign. <laughs> so if you're using the same computer, I recommend that you do you click here so they you, you don't have to do that every time. So. Uh, once you go, once you go in, it'll ask, um, or it will show the different programs that we have available or grants that are available. Uh, so this one is the first one, Advanced McHenry County, and and you basically start a new application. Uh, this is a, a just a, there's a lot of fields that are required. So this is one of those that you 
you know, depending on the organization, the project, you can you, you can be as creative as you like. So I'm just gonna say um, I'm not creative at all. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna say McHenry test. Uh, and so that will start the application. And um, we're not gonna go through all the different fields here, but what you'll see is that there is these different sections here. Each one of them does uh, require you're required to con to fill it out and complete the, the the application. Again, you can download it to use it as a worksheet, which. Uh, Again, can be helpful when you're working on an uh, application if it's multiple, um, multiple organizations or multiple people applying for it. So again, I'm just gonna, just real quick, I'm not gonna include everything here, but one thing that I wanna clarify is uh, um, under funding request, this is the total funding for your project. So it's not just year one or year two or year three. So this includes all your direct costs and indirect costs. Um, this helps us a lot because then this field is directly linked to what the funding availability is. So understanding what the total cost of that project is going to be is going to be very helpful for us when we're looking at uh, doing the evaluation process. Um, you will be required to do to to enter an email, um, and then again, when do you estimate that the project will be done or will be started and completed? You, you'll see that information here. Uh, you'll also be asked to identify uh, whether you are a not-for-profit or a private enterprise. And again, all these fields are required by the U.S. Treasury. So um, we're having the same thing for our own department. So if, if, if a department is trying to enter, uh, come up with a, submit a, a project, we're, they're going to be required to do this as well. Um, okay, so as you'll see, um, it doesn't, it does, let you it doesn't let you go on to the next step until you fill everything out so i guess we're gonna do this for a little bit um, you know maybe i am just going to see if we have a test application uh, you'll see the different sections there uh, for so far we have 44 different cases um, let's see I think we have a test one available right now. Okay, so I will go through the process real quick then. <laughs> and just double check that we don't have one. So when we're looking at, uh, let me see, this is the budget information that we were talking about. Um, so this is where you'll be able to add your budget and you'll see, um, as, as you recall, the different seven different sections that we talked about under what category you're, you're including that information. This number has to match with the total cost of the project. So you just remember to keep that in mind. When you're looking at this, um, the section that I, I wanted to include here is, so there will be a section where you'll be able to add your documents. Again, this is where you'll be able to, for example, the question that came up about um, supporting documents or recommendation or agreements or anything like that um, that you have, this is where you'll be able to upload this, this information. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention on the application process is the budget. So this is where the multi-year budget information is going to come up. Um, we have made that template available and whatever, in any field or section that we require a, a document to be uploaded, we have made a budget template or a template document made available for, for you. So for example, this is a link and it downloads a spreadsheet. And so this would be the template uh, that we make available and we do have in every spreadsheet or document that we put out there, we do have instructions. And, and so they can guide, the, the instructions can guide you through that process on how you fill that information out. So for example, the budget template um, shows the different tasks and the different costs that you're looking at. And also um, these 
puts the information in our reporting format. So uh, our financial statements are broken down by what is personnel, what is contracts, what commodities, and so forth. So you are being asked to include that information so that when we are tracking that information in our financial system, uh, we can put that in according to our chart of accounts. So just something to keep in mind, you can add more fields if you need to, you can remove columns and modify different things, whatever you need to do. And uh, again, the instructions are included and that's gonna be made available with every template that we make of it. Uh, that we put on the website. So uh, just something to be on the lookout. So in this case, what you would do is you would take the information from your template, uh, this total, so you'll see under personnel uh, what that total is, and then you'll plug that information here. What's for 2022, what's 2023, and so forth. So again, we do encourage you to, if it's a multi-year uh, uh, application, that you include that information there. Uh, here, that way it does help us with how we're going to, if the, if, if the application or the project is approved, how the cash flow is going to work. We wanna make sure that, that, that that's included as well. Um, that's, that's pretty much it uh, as far as the application process. Uh, there was a question about outcomes and how do we measure, how we're going to measure KPI. So um, that's included here. So we are going to ask, um, some, uh, let's see, what the expected outcome is. So if it's a new pro, uh, if it's a new program, we wanna ask, uh, let me find out where we put that information. So here's one where um, if it's an existing program and you're submitting an application for these, we do ask that you include um, performance measures, so uh, key performance indicators, KPIs, things like that. And some data that shows why you think you're correct. Why your project will work. <laughs> so we ask, you know, what that measure is, it is, how you're measuring your programs right now, um, what it is, you know, what that data factor is, what you think is gonna be once you invest or once you, this pro uh, project is completed. And so, uh, we are going to be using these also as, as, a, as a measurement for our own programs and how we report to the U.S. Treasury. So again, if, if in some cases, you know, the, we are going to hold you accountable or hold the organization accountable to this information. So if there's an output that is being estimated and that measure is not being met, we're gonna ask why and, and we're being required to uh, document why that information, you know, why that variance exists. So, so just something to keep in mind. Um, we didn't include a specific measures here because we are getting applications from all over. So we don't know, you know, what, what's applicable to our government is not applicable to a not-for-profit, even from project to project, right? So if it's a, a human services project versus a capital project, the, the performances are different. So, um, so that's why we leave it open to the applicant to include that information. Um, not sure if there's any questions on, uh, on the application or it is going to be asked uh, to be electronically signed so there's no application document to be mailed to us or anything. Everything is gonna be through the portal. Um, the, the first level of review will be the Browner group. And again, they will go through the uh, it's going to be sort of a back and forth. So they'll go the initial review and and if there is any questions or additional information, everything will be submitted to, to Neighborly. And so whomever is the uh, person that's submitting the application will get an email saying, hey, there's a status update on this and they're asking for more information or they're asking for this document or you know, whatever the case might be. Um, if you wanted to have more than one person um, uh, receiving these updates, you can add users, so you'll see that information here. Um, so I, you can add you know, as many people as you like for these applications, for them to have visibility over what's happening with this specific application. So if you have multiple applications, you don't have to have the same people in the, you have a question. Um, so when you hit submit, are we going to be able to download a copy of what we're submitting? You will be able to. Yeah. Great. Yes, Jeff. Um, the application can be completed over a period of time, so they can be saved and you want to think about them. Correct. And they'll be able to. Yeah, so. Um, there are several applications that are just kind of barely 
first started. Right. We as the county do have visibility over what's happening. So, um, for example, you know, uh, you know, Algonquin Township completed step one of ten, and then you know these probably was started a few days ago, and so you do have that ability to uh, complete one section, save it, and then come back to the application later. We don't have a hard timeline on this, as I said earlier. We just we're gonna, not really going to ask Brian to look at any of them until December 1st, but after that, we'll see. The, and nothing's going to happen. No dollars are going to be released without the county board uh, voting on it. Yeah, we're hopeful that we are getting several at a time that are, so we, the board can do one vote with six grants on there, right? But right. the earliest any of that's going to happen is, is January. Yeah. Hi, what, um, what assistance is being offered to target uh, businesses to help answer and guide us through some questions that we might have in order to fill out this application? I didn't say what you said. Are, you, are private businesses eligible? Right. Right, but what assistance is being offered toward private businesses who have no experience with these kinds of applications and questions being asked and measurements and all that kind of stuff? Like, where do we go to help? There's frequently asked questions yeah. that is going to be growing every day, hopefully. So you might see your questions on there. Um, there's also an opportunity to email in your questions, and that's going to help us generate uh, more questions and more answers. But if we have specific questions, is there somebody we can talk to about this grant? Yes. And do we get that information, or? Oh, we get Okay. And um, the, you know, the best thing to do there's the um, ARP at MontgomeryCountyIL.gov. So if you need the specific information or you need specific help with the application, the best thing to do would be send an email there, and we'll, we would follow up with schedule an appointment and do all that um, so that we can. Go What's that email again? ARP at Montgomery County IL. and it, it is available on the. Uh, presentation here. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a quick question again about the deadlines. So, December 1st is when you're first going to start to look at them, but there, I mean, there's no hard end to that, or? There really isn't, and I know that's, that's kind of a squishy feeling, and, yeah. and we may have to change on that, and we may have to publicly say that, hey, we aren't going to be receiving any more applications beyond March 1st. That we've got so many too much in here. We don't know. We don't know what we're going to get in. We don't know. Um, but they could, some could be voted on as early as your January meeting. Yeah, that would have to be pretty solid and pretty quick and okay. pretty much a home run and a no brainer. And okay. you know, hopefully we'll get a couple of those. Got but it. Because, because we are trying to maximize the utilization of our $59 million, we really we're wanting to see where some of these other federal funding opportunities come. And, and we talked about the infrastructure goal. That was, you know, that was signed today. You know, we, people haven't even read that. So I mean, it, it's, it, if there's something that might be served in another way, <laughs> we'd like to see if we can at least explore that other way. Uh, so that's that's going to yeah. necessitate that we be a little bit deliberative and, and slow on, on some of these grant opportunities. So this is the email that's on slide 18. Um, we're responding to these emails almost as soon as we get the emails. Um, if it's a question that continues to repeat, then we add it to the frequently asked question. If it is, if it is a request for to make an appointment for specific help, we, that's something that can that email goes to my desk, goes to Kevin's desk, and it goes to five guys in the bar. Sorry, I had another part of my question. Please, please, um, right that's part. Um, collaborative um, applications too. Um, yeah, and we're really encouraging collaborative okay. applications. Um, okay. There has to be a lead, okay. but yep. if we can note those collaborations, I think they'll, like in so many times in grant applications, more collaboration strengthens uh, the application. With the $29 million sort of total project limit, I would think you'd want to spread the money around. Is there an individual project upper limit you guys are no, we haven't. We haven't said that. I mean, the, the, the question can get reversed too. Is there, is there one that's too small? And, and, we, and we haven't said that either. Although I, I would tell you, when we talked about designing this program, we really didn't think. We, we, I don't want to. I don't want to see a lot of five thousand dollar grants. You know, but we want, really would like to see something with a little bit of volume and a little bit of an impact. You know? uh, but we don't have any hard. 
Fund category. Um, there's 10 points there. So if, if you're partnering with other uh, organizations and there's and, and there's resources, funds, and again you can add dollar value to um, you know if there's collaboration between staff members and you can include that as dollar values that are being put towards the project that gets points in your evaluation criteria. So that's encouraged. And that was actually a point of discussion at the board level because you know we want to see that. I'd like to see some of your own yep. skin in the game. Yes, sir. Can the collaboration process be a for profit and bringing in and piggybacking, helping maybe a small non profit so that collaboration could be right. both? Okay. Other good questions? So um, yeah, the best way to reach out to us is that email um, address. And like like Pete said, we have a lot of eyes <laughs> in that inbox. So um, we're responding to these as almost as soon as they get to the inbox. And uh, we do have uh, other resources available on the website as well. So we encourage you to check download them. and check them out and review them as well. And you know, any questions you have, also send them send them there. And we, we will take care of. Them answering them for you. So thank you again for spending a little bit of your afternoon with us and uh, uh, we're looking forward to your project okay. ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>